Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to Patrick Stewart looks further into his dad's shell shock from Who Do You Think You Are? This is part seven of the clips we've been watching. In the last clip, he went in a helicopter ride with um, a guy who was in his 90s who had dropped with Patrick Stewart's father in a mission, uh, Operation Dragoon. Uh, in France in the 1940s. This, um, obviously, I think it's going to go probably into either the later part of the war or maybe even after the war, um, just because we're only getting clips, so it's cutting out a lot of the show, unfortunately. So I'm not really going to say too much else, uh, but before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give this a like. That really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell so you get notifications on future videos. But with all of the fun stuff said, let's go ahead and uh, watch the video. Having found out the truth about his brother's parentage, Patrick now has one last question about his father to follow up. I am very interested in understanding more about what the newspaper report called shell shock or post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I'm not going to go too much into it because they obviously are not including this in the clips, but I'm wondering if what they said, is it that um, they found out that Patrick Stewart's older brother, the one born in 1925, uh, was he not actually his brother? I don't know. Or maybe a half brother, because I think they thought they had the same parents, but maybe they only have the same father or... I don't know. Maybe something, some sort of what we would call an NPE, uh, which is originally it stands for uh, stood for non paternity event. Which actually I had someone comment about this recently, so this will be a good little thing to say. But uh, it, it's called non paternity event. Uh, originally, it was coined because DNA for uh, genealogy originally focused solely on the Y chromosome. And because of that, with Y chromosome DNA testing, that only looks at the patrilineal line. So they came up with the term non-paternity event because it just meant when they proved that someone who they thought was the father wasn't the biological father. Nowadays, it uh, can mean all sorts of different things. Not parent expected. Um, I can't remember other ones. There's a few. And then I think some people use other terms for it too, to kind of be more inclusive because autosomal DNA testing now can prove if mothers, you know, someone who they thought was the biological mother turns out to not be the biological mother. So if you ever hear that term NPE, that's what that stands for. So I wonder if that is what happened here. Is there an NPE, uh, event, um, for the Stewart family? What it means... Patrick is wondering if the condition may have continued to affect Alfred when he returned to civilian life after the war. I want to know how that could have been affecting the man I met when I was five years old, when he came back, when the war was over and his military service was done. Patrick's arranged to meet Robert Bieber, vice chairman of the veterans mental health charity, Combat Stress. A little while ago, a few days ago, I was shown a newspaper report mm -hmm. which uh, uh, recounted how my father had returned home from France suffering from shell shock. I don't think it was probably just a solitary event of the bombardment, but the likelihood is soldiers who were retreating with the French saw some pretty nasty elements of, uh, of the way that the Nazis treated the French civilians. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of evidence to show that treatment of them had a greater impact in some ways on soldiers than actual warfare as we know it. Obviously, I can only offer you probabilities rather than any, anything more than that because it's a long time ago. But when your father came home, he would have experienced issues of isolation, inability to communicate, um, nightmares, flashbacks, and perhaps domestic violence. Those who couldn't be cured effectively were, were locked up in lunatic asylums and called service lunatics. The problems caused by battlefield trauma were first identified in World War I. 80,000 soldiers were diagnosed with shell shock. Treatment, varying from electroshock therapy to hypnosis, was largely ineffective. Some men were diagnosed as incurable, 
and remained institutionalized for life. In the interwar period, when Alfred joined up, shell shock was seen as a source of shame and weakness. There are lots of tragic stories in which soldiers' families tried to extract their loved ones from mental hospitals, and they were turned away because this man is slow, incapable of recovery, and they effectively died there. So these, those are one of the sort of many tragedies that happened. How capable would such a person be of asking for help? They would be capable of doing it, but because of the experiences that they've had, as I've described, about isolation and, comf uh, and not wanting to ask for charity, they'd be far less likely to do so. Even today, we don't see servicemen in combat stress, very often until 12 and 14 years after their service has elapsed, by which time their condition has become entrenched. They become, I mean, I'm, I'm taking an extreme case, they can drink sodden, uh, very often they've been in prison, uh, their lives are very often disintegrated, and then it comes to domestic violence. Was there anything, Robert, that our family might have done that might have made things easier for my father? I doubt it, because hindsight is a wonderful thing. <sighs> Had your father been prosecuted for domestic violence, which itself is unlikely because he was a domestic as opposed to anything else. It's just possible he might have, he might have got a referral to a psychiatrist who um, might have then seen that there's a, there's a different kind of problem. This is surmise, but everything you're describing to me does sound as if he was a very poorly man. Mm. And that uh, he was one of those who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yes, yes, I can see that. I, I'm immensely grateful to you for all that you've told me. Um, you can't be aware, but your words are helping me to create and make significant readjustments about this man I knew. All right. Wow. That, um, that one was really... Well, I had to stop myself there for a second because I wasn't quite sure what to say. Um, I mean, this was a good video. It, it's very interesting because it's something that I think everyone knows nowadays is that you know the the people who went off to fight in wars and experienced all of those terrible things um and especially seeing you know the different horrors of what the nazis committed uh whether it just be on french civilians or especially uh those who um you know helped uh help help liberate the different concentration camps um but you know it's pretty interesting too that you know for decades a lot of those uh those issues of ptsd or shell shock or whatever you want to call it really i don't want to say got swept under the rug but was kind of viewed in a really odd way which really was unfortunate i can't remember the name of the movie but it reminds me a bit about that one movie i think it's brothers where it's about um it's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Tobey Maguire, I think. And the movie's basically about that they're two brothers. One's kind of a screw up. One's not and in the military. And then the one in the military goes off to war, ends up going through some pretty horrific stuff, and then comes back and suffers from really bad PTSD. And, you know, throughout the film, it kind of just it shows a lot of different crazy stuff. I don't know how true it is to what, you know, actual PTSD would be like. Um, but I don't know, it's just something that kind of popped into my mind because I've seen that video. And from a genealogical standpoint, there is a possibility that if he looked further, had a genealogist look further, someone, um, to try to see what kind of records were available, maybe they would see if there were any sort of evaluations or psychiatric things that he had to undergo, um, and documentation relating to that that might be available. I would imagine if he's admitting it to the point that it's being published in a newspaper that there might be some documentation of him getting some sort of psychiatric or psychological evaluation. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give it a like. That really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. And if you'd like to get access to content early or even access to exclusive content, be sure to become a patron of mine on Patreon where you're not only going to get that extra access, but you'll also be helping out in supporting the channel. 
And if you'd like, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.